In this video, let me show you the difference between for and for each methods. Both these methods are used to iterate over an array of elements. The for method is the older way or the traditional way of looping through an array, whereas for each is a newer way of looping through an array. Now let's see what are the differences between these two methods, though both these are used to loop through an array. So I have saved a web page. Now let's write the script section that is a JavaScript code script and let me define an array. Let my ARR equals 1, 10, 100 and 1000. This is our array. Now let me just try to display the values using for method first. So for we need to define the variable that is i equal to 0. Then the condition i less than my ARR dot length then i plus plus that is to execute each time right so that once the value of i becomes equal to my array dot length then the loop will not be executed hope you already know the for loop so let me just try to display console dot log i okay and now let's see the output let me refresh this is the page oh now we are seeing i that is the value of i actually i want to see the values in the array so how we should specify my arr of i previously we have been seeing the index Actually, we want to see the elements. Now, let's see the output. Let me refresh. See, 1, 10, 100 and 1000. Now, let's try to do the same using for each method. So, to have a separation, let me just type some lines. Okay. And to use the for each method, we need to call it on the array. So, my ARR dot for each. Then, I need to pass the function here i will be the value if we want to get the index we can also get that separately but here let me just specify console dot log i here i is the item or if we want we can specify item so that we need to change it here that is the first parameter of the function is the item in the array now let me save this and refresh see after this separation we are seeing the same items in the array because it is also looping through the array. So what is the difference between these two? Considering the readability, I think for each is better, right? If we are using for method, we need to declare a variable, then have to check the condition and also increment it. Here, we just have to use the callback function, specify it and access it. Actually, while considering the performance, it is said that for loop is better or faster in looping through the array considered to for each. So considering readability for each is better than traditional for method but considering performance for method is faster than for each method. Next let us try to use break inside for and for each that is suppose if the element is 100 oh sorry my ARR of i equal equals 100 I want to break the loop. That is, I want to exit from the loop. So, I can just specify break, right? Now, let me save this. Let me refresh. See, here we are seeing only 1, 10 and 100. 1000 is not displayed because we have gone out of the loop. Here, we are seeing all the four elements. Now, if we try to do the same inside the for each, we will get an error. Let me write the code. That is, if item equal equals 100, then I want to break. But this will result in an error. Let's see that. Let me refresh. See, uncaught syntax error, illegal break statement at 17. Let's see, this is 17. So break cannot be used inside for each method. Whereas we can use the break statement. That is, we can exit from a loop if we want inside the for method or for loop. But we cannot do the same with for each method. Now, let me show you another difference that is regarding the scope of the variable. Suppose here, instead of declaring it here, I am specifying let i equal to 25. Okay. And here i equal to 0. Then I am doing all this. Let me comment this because I don't want to try the break statement here. I just wanted to show you. Let me comment this as well. And here, let me try to display the value of i. Okay, now let's see what is the value of i. Let me refresh. See, the value of i is 4, which means that its scope is not confined within this for loop. The value of i is defined here as 25. 
but as we have run the loop the value of i is changed what does that mean the scope of the variable is not kept within the block otherwise the value of i should be 25 but here it is changed to 4 now let's try the same with 4 each now let me comment this and make it as before this also okay now here after this separation line let me define the value of item because here we are using item equal to 25 and here we have accessed it and console.log is displayed then let me display the value of i sorry item so console.log item now let me save this let me refresh see the value is 25 itself that is after the for each method the value of item is not changed which means that the scope of the variable is within the block only. So that is another difference. Though we normally do not use the same variable name inside the loop and outside, still for you to understand, I use the same variable name, i or item. So here, while using the for each method, the value of item is not changed. Even after the execution of for each method, we are getting the same value. That is the value we have set before the execution of for each. But in case of for method, the value of i has changed, which means that the scope is within the block in case of for each, but it is not within the block in case of for method. So we have seen differences between for and for each methods. For method is actually a traditional way of looping through an array. Whereas for each is a newer method or newer option to loop through an array. Then while considering readability, for each is better than for method. But considering performance, for method is faster than for each method. Then we cannot use the break statement within for each method, whereas it is possible in case of for method. Finally, the scope of the variable is not confined to the block in case of for method, but it is only within the block in case of for each method. So these are the main differences between for and for each methods.